Time to meet up with the winner of Canada's Dumbest Charge. Five Canadians took on big companies and five frustrating fees. Hey ho! Hey ho! This paper chart has got to go! In a nationwide competition to find Canada's Dumbest Charge, they went head to head for your vote. You people are bandits. Now the results are in. Who did you pick? What is Canada's dumbest charge? <laughs> You're about to find out. But first up, we're in a grocery store shopping for gluten-free goods. To gluten or not to gluten? That's our question. Trying to get at the truth behind the trend. Um, excuse me, should I buy gluten-free pasta or regular pasta? Gluten-free. Really? I think it's better for you. Hmm, let's see what another shopper thinks. Hey there, excuse me. Um, do you think I should buy regular pasta or the um, gluten-free? You should probably try the gluten-free one. I believe it's healthier. Yep, once a specialty found in health food stores, gluten-free products are now mainstream. Betty Crocker, what's cooking, Betty? They're everywhere. Pancake mix, gluten-free. Pancakes from scratch, every Sunday. Avoiding gluten is the food obsession du jour. In fact, one in five of us steer clear. Hmm. Gluten zero, Tom one. You read all these magazine articles or newspaper articles and say, you know, if you feel this way, you know, maybe try gluten-free product and then you, you won't feel, you'll feel better, you won't feel so bloated, um, maybe even lose some pounds, you know. <laughs> so is that what all this is about? A healthier diet? I push on for answers. These look good. Lutino? Uh, excuse me, sh should I buy these cookies? Well, it depends. Are you celiac? No. Then move along, mister. This is my food. Actually, we know who this guy is. He's BC comedian Darcy Michael. And the gluten-free trend has got him shaking his head. Why? Yeah. <laughs> For Darcy, it's not a lifestyle choice. It's a necessity. People aren't treating it like the disease that it is. They're treating it like Atkins diet. It's too trendy. It's too trendy. Stop it. You're ruining my life. Darcy's one of only about 35,000 Canadians diagnosed with celiac disease. Gluten attacks him. Living with it. What's the, what's the physical effect if yeah, you have it's, it's some... It's terrible. Like, uh, if I, uh, about the first year into being gluten-free, I, I said to my husband, I was like, I'm going to go and have a, a burger. I want to go and get a fast food burger. I haven't had one in a year. And the next morning, it was like a dinosaur coming out of the bedroom. I was like, raw! Uh, and my waist was eight inches bigger. And Come as on. a gay man, that is the worst punishment in the world, you know? You do not want to have an eight-inch belly. Or an eight, well, like, most gay men are like, eight inches, so fat. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. but no, it, 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 besides like just the pure bloating, like you're just you're emotionally, you're a wreck and physically, you know, like I can't eat for days afterwards. And How long do those symptoms last? If I get, I call it being glutened. Uh, if I get glutened, I could be off work for two weeks from it, just being sick. So what is the truth? Should we all fear being glutened? Especially with all the caution wrapped around it. Caution that's got many of us tied in knots. And it's no wonder. Check out all these headlines. Shrink your waistline with a decadent gluten-free ingredient. Gwyneth Paltrow shares how going gluten-free changed her family's life. And get this, more than 4 million Canadians are going gluten-free. Wow! When it comes to the gluten-free trade, companies go where the celebrities are. Yeah, I don't discriminate when it comes to food, so I like to try everything. I tried Udi's today, and I like it. Check out this video brought to you by Udi's, a huge North American brand, trotting out a galaxy of stars. And we've seen a lot of changes in our health and feel a lot better. Going gaga over Udi's gluten-free products. What I experience is that it tastes potentially even better. <laughs> But unless celebrities have celiac disease, Darcy Michael says the stars should keep their mouths shut. What do you make of the celebrities who are going gluten-free and saying it's changed their lives? Oh, yeah, like Miley Cyrus says it's how she lost all the weight, saying gluten is crap, which is ironic, because that's how I found out I was allergic to gluten. 
<laughs> so what is gluten? A protein that gives bread its spring, found in wheat, barley, and rye. But do we actually know that? Canadian movie stars Seth Rogen and Jay Baruchel lampoon the anti-gluten trend in their hit film, This is the End. You don't even know what gluten know is. What Gluten is? No, you have no idea I what gluten is. I do know what gluten is. Gluten's a vague term. It's, it's, it's something that's used to categorize things that are bad. You know? Calories. That's a gluten. Fat. That's a gluten. Somebody just told you you probably shouldn't eat gluten. You're like, oh, I guess I shouldn't eat gluten. Gluten means bad shit, man, and I'm not eating it. Mmm. Oh, God. This bite is better than the previous bite. <laughs> Funny stuff. Compared to those guys, our shoppers know more, right? Time for Darcy and I to find out. Yeah. Just the eye candy for this interview. Oh, uh, I thought I was the well, eye candy. The <laughs> I thought I was the eye candy. Yeah. Okay, geez. Do you know what gluten is? Uh, well, it's one of the items in meat products. Um, it's starch. Starch? Not quite. I tend to think sometimes maybe it's a new trend. Would it be? <laughs> Ooh, like a starch, a wheat, protein. Protein. <laughs> Bingo. You oh, got okay. it. <laughs> so it's sort of, it's a game show. It seems to be a lot of guesswork when it comes to gluten. Timothy Caulfield leads the Health Law Institute at the University of Alberta. He studied the food industry's influence on consumers for years. Where is the marketing philosophy or strategy coming from? History tells us that people are often looking for a simple answer. They want a particular component, right? Whether it's sugar, whether it's fat, whether it's salt, something that's gonna fix their health issues. Uh, and I think marketers can play on that, right? They can play on, it's almost like simplifying the story around nutrition to this component, going gluten-free. That story seems to be working. Remember, in Canada, only about 35,000 people have been diagnosed with celiac disease. Yet millions of us are trying to avoid it, to the tune of half a billion dollars in sales. So, how does that break down at the cash register? Welcome to this week's episode of The Price Is What? Let's meet our contestants, Cassidy and Chris. Come on down! They're both shopping for meals, but who will get the better deals? She's gluten-free, and he's... Fancy free. Let's get things started with Betty Crocker Devil's Food Cake Mix. Cost? $2.49. How about Betty's Gluten-Free Cake Mix? $6.99. Almost three times the price. <laughs> Next up, noodling with spaghetti. This brand costs $1.79. What does Cassidy's Gluten-Free version check in at? $2.99. Over a dollar more, and you get way less. We've got some Dempster's buns. The gluten-free version costs almost 50% more. Looks like gluten-free is getting clobbered. But there's still the bonus round. How about some bread? This whole wheat loaf costs $2.99. Udi's whole grain clocks in at $6.29. Jeepers, Cass. Gluten-free is still more expensive, but for that, it's got to be more nutritious. Or is it? Stay tuned. Later, we reveal the winner of Canada's Dumbest Charge. And our competition makes waves in Ottawa. When will the government stop the nickel and diming of Canadians? <laughs> What's your gut reaction? Think gluten-free is better for you? Share your thoughts on Facebook and Twitter. We're shopping for the truth behind the trend when it comes to gluten-free products. Canadian comedian Darcy Michael has celiac disease, which means he's got to be gluten-free. <laughs> just a little bit. It's the typical you want what you can't have. Yes. And he's not amused by the hype that leads to things like this. Seriously, gluten-free shampoo. I mean, the likelihood of anybody, even with celiac, needing something like this is next to none. Would, do you use this? Mm. Never mind. Darcy does like the idea of more gluten-free options, even though they can cost more, because companies say they're complicated to make. As for the rest of us, what do we get out of it? Well, white bread isn't seen as the healthiest of breads, so we take a loaf of it and this whole grain to test shoppers' assumptions. So you get a, your basic Wonder Bread, and this is this 
It's a gluten-free brand. If you heard gluten-free is good, you're going to buy this one. Mm -hmm. I guess I would say maybe this one. Right. What about um, so between these two, I would likely choose that. Okay. Gluten-free stuff is generally more expensive, so, <laughs> you know, maybe. <laughs> if it's more expensive, maybe. it's got to be better yeah, for you, maybe. right? Better for you? Hmm. Welcome back to The Price Is What? We're looking at gluten-free, but thinking it can be gluten-pricey. So, how gluten-healthy is it? Pass and Chris, take it away! Remember that Udi's whole grain bread? Compare it to this white bread. Gram for gram, Udi's has more calories, more sodium, way more fat, double the sugar, and less of the good stuff, fiber. Next to this whole wheat version, similar results and even less fiber. So if you're going to go gluten-free, you might want to check the facts. Like this major fact. Cutting this stuff out means potentially losing lots of important nutrients from your diet. Yet new products hit the shelves every day, promoted by the industry as a way to better health. Professor Timothy Caulfield says it's really all about marketing. Just because it's gluten-free for sure does not mean that it's healthier. So are you saying then there are companies capitalizing on this murkiness to put products out there? The truth is so, so simple, but the market doesn't want it to be simple, right? They want to, the message to be, to be complicated. They want to sell these different kinds of, uh, whether it's a fitness routine, some kind of magic diet, or some kind of magic food product. They want to be able to market those things. They don't want the simple truth, which is, you know, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, get your exercise. That's about it, right? And you can't sell a lot of products with that message. He's right, but what about people without celiac disease who say they're gluten intolerant? There's no agreed upon diagnosis for that. Do any of your friends say they're gluten intolerant? Yeah, one of my closest friends, Reba, says she's gluten intolerant, but from what I've seen, that's only six days a week because she refuses to give up Friday night pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but this is serious business to companies like Udi's. Last year, the American food maker commissioned something called Canadian Attitudes Towards Gluten-Free Study. It concluded, we feel healthier, happier, and more energetic, reducing or cutting out gluten. People who go gluten-free say they feel better, they have more energy. Uh, how do you explain that? How do you counter that argument? So yeah, the placebo effect is, is real and it's powerful. You have to remember that, right? But I will say it's very, very difficult to, dr to make direct causal relationships uh, between going gluten-free and, and feeling better and having more energy. And there's no evidence to support that conclusion. But that hasn't stopped Udi's from suggesting going gluten-free could give you more energy and that there's no downside to trying a gluten-free lifestyle. I show Caulfield Udi's website. There is a downside, right? Because you're going to be paying more, right? Almost certainly. And it is challenging to eat the nutritionally balanced diet that they're recommending, right? It becomes more difficult to do that. But wait, there's more. Udi's also suggests going gluten-free may improve symptoms of autism in children. Any clear science on that? Not yet. It's really frustrating that you have this kind of portrayal given the state of the science. Are they playing on parental concerns? Are they, are they playing on you know, almost parental guilt that they should be taking this kind of action to try to improve these con conditions? The parents may be willing to try anything. We ask Udi's for an interview many times. They turn us down. So we head to the nation's capital, where we hear Udi's has a booth at this gluten-free expo. This is cinnamon raisin, actually. The place is filled with all sorts of gluten-free goodies. But we've got an appetite for answers and make a beeline to the Udi's booth and a company rep. We're doing a story on the gluten-free trend, how people are going gluten-free mm -hmm. a lot, and we're just asking questions why people are going, especially if they don't have celiac, mm -hmm. why would people go gluten-free? They just feel better. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of people, I mean, an intolerance, it'd just be like you feel tired. I mean, people with ADHD, if they go gluten-free, they find that their symptoms are a lot less. Really? Boy, first autism, now ADHD? So when people come up and ask you about the products, do you tell them about the ADHD and things like that? Yeah, if it comes up. Right? Really? Yeah? And you feel confident that's the case? Yeah, I mean, it works for some people, so you have to at least say, you know, it works, why not try it? We came looking for answers and leave with evidence that's, once again, anecdotal. 
there is no evidence that going gluten-free itself is, is beneficial, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a downside to it in an expense and, and convenience uh, and trying to maintain that nutritious lifestyle. As for our shoppers, they're starting to see past the glamour of gluten-free. Most people don't need a gluten-free diet. Mm -hmm. I agree. You believe that? I believe that. Yeah. Will you keep buying gluten-free products, do you think? Kind of edged away from it. I was actually going to look, I make my own muffins and whatnot. Well, no, I we can come over to your house. You can make me some gluten-free muffins. <laughs> well, I, no one's going to yeah. complain. Well, you'll have to bring the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's I got Google. But, We're covered. But, uh, We're yeah, yeah. Take it from Darcy. Unless you have a real health issue, don't buy the gluten-free hype. Just remember, the truth behind the trend. Coming up. Cue the drum roll. Envelope, please. Who's the winner of Canada's Dumbest Charge? Up next. Fight back. Be a Marketplace watchdog and help us sniff out scams. Time to meet up with the winner of Canada's Dumbest Charge. After combing the country for your nominations... Do you think I have Canada's Dumbest Charge? <laughs> We narrowed it down to the five top contenders. In front of a live audience in Toronto, five Canadians took the stage. I think I've got it in the back. And duked it out to convince you to vote for their dumb charge. Canada's dumbest charge is the fee that we pay for paper bills and bank statements. Jason Card had it with paying two bucks extra to get a paper bill and bank statement. Hey ho! Hey ho! This paper charge has got to go! Bell charges $2.80 a month for Touchtone service. Selma Schachter is calling out Touchtone fees. You people are bandits. It's a money grab because in this day and age, you have no choice but to use Touchtone service. Lisa Witz believes banks are hammering us with ATM fees. This is how I feel when I use another bank's ATM. I feel like I'm getting dinged. Mike Anderson says airlines charging to select your seat should take off. When I see something that appears to be unfair, I like to stand up and, and make it right. And Lauren Cooper is singing the blues about Ticketmaster fees. This big time company who has very little to no competition whatsoever Ooh. can gouge you. After our five contenders made their case, you voted in the tens of thousands, vented to us on video. This touchdown fee is the dumbest charge. I went with Ticketmaster. Bell's touchdown fees need to go goodbye. I vote for the ATM fees. Your dumb charges even trend on Twitter. We counted up your votes. Five Canadians. We're gonna get rid of this charge. Five fees. But only one can take the dubious title of... And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. We've got a winner. Or should we say, loser. Cue the drum roll. Envelope, please. Uh -huh. mm. Let's get moving. Okay. I'm off to deliver the news to the winner. Selma Schachner, you have Canada's dumbest charge! <laughs> That's fabulous! Thank you! I'm flattered. I think that there are a lot of people out there uh, who are, are fed up with Bell. Well, thousands and thousands of Canadians voted, and a lot of them were in your corner. Really? Selma's inspiration? Her mom. She'd be awestruck. She'd be very proud, yeah, because she taught me about being principled. It's time to listen to your customers. Well, there's no better way to give Bell that message than in person. We're headed there now. Do you want to come with us? Do I? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Grab your coat. Come on, buddy. We're going on a trip. We hit the road and show up at a nearby corporate office. Ready to call them? As ready as I'll ever be. They won't return our calls, so we give it one more try. Leave Bell a message. Canadians have voted, and Canada's dumbest charge is Bell's touchtone fee. Really hoping that somebody could come out and speak with us. Let's see if they call us back. Okay, great. We wait, but no word. That's a little disappointing. I would have hoped that they would have at least addressed 
this issue. But we've got a little message for Belle. We leave them a calling card. Home of Canada's dumbest charge, Belle Touchstone Fee. Perfect gift for them. Belle won't come on camera, but in a statement tells us the Touchstone Fee isn't going away. Sooner or later, someone's going to listen to us. We're hoping Ottawa listens. We asked the Minister of Industry to talk. No luck. But we catch the ear of the opposition consumer critic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. CBC Marketplace has identified the dumbest charges that Canadian consumers pay. ATM fees, pay-to-pay -pay fees, airline fees, touchstone fees. When will the government stop the nickel and diming of Canadians? Hey, hey. Mr. Speaker, Canadian consumers deserve access to credit uh, on fair and transparent terms. That's why we Nothing on touchtone, but new legislation could outlaw telecom paper bill fees. Meantime, Salma's got a message for Bell. The word is out there that I have Canada's dumbest charge, or rather that you have Canada's dumbest charge. So touchtone is number one, and by far, it took 41% of the votes. Want to know how the other dumb charges rank? Coming in at number two, with 26% of the vote, paper fees. Number three, ATM fees. Flying in fourth, airline seat selection. And landing in fifth place, Ticketmaster. Canada don't give up, fight for what is right. Take it from a winner and keep sending us those dumb charges. Next week on Marketplace. Who wants to play our game? Remedy or rip off? Price itself is a rip off. We reveal how not to get fooled by a slick sales pitch. We're both hungry and uh, the tea is not holding up. How big names. I just told you it works for me. And big marketing. On a monthly basis, every program is $394.99. Get you to spend big bucks. I was like, I'm oh, commercial. Bye, bye, bye.